Today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys a review for Dragon Ball The Breakers and talk about whether or not it's something that you should pick up. Now this video is going to be similar to a Before You Buy, something you might have seen on the Game Ranks channel. Now the footage you're going to be watching is going to be a mix of some Survivor gameplay as well as some Killer gameplay, that way you can see both sides of the coin. Now, Dragon Ball The Breakers is Bandai Namco's asymmetrical take on the Dragon Ball franchise. So if you've already invested a lot of time into other asymmetrical games that are similar to this, then you're probably going to love this game, especially if you're already a fan of Dragon Ball. Now, this game's got some really, really amazing parts, but it's also got some blaring red flags. Let's start off with the bad before we hop into the good, because I'll be honest, I'm a little bit biased when it comes to the good. I love asymmetrical games, and I've been having an absolute blast with Dragon Ball The Breakers. I already sank 20 hours into this game, and I've loved every single second. But with that, I digress, let's hop into the negatives real fast. First things first, the lobby system. You can't choose the role you want to play. This is aggravating. Even as somebody who loves asymmetrical games and loves Dragon Ball The Breakers, I hate that I can't just pick the role I want to play. In every single asymmetrical game I play, I play both sides. But this isn't how a lot of people like to play asymmetrical games. Obviously, you have the people who play both roles, no doubt, but you also have a bunch of people who like to main one specific side. In Dragon Ball The Breakers, you don't really get that option. Instead, you kind of just suggest to the game what you would like to play, and it's left up to chance whether or not you'll actually get to play that role. What the game doesn't tell you is you're almost guaranteed to not play the killer if your priority level is 0, 1, 2, or 3. Your chances of playing killer with those are pretty much non-existent, and instead you have a much more likely chance of playing the killer once your priority reaches 4, 5, 6, or 7. This means you could very likely find yourself playing survivor 4 or 5 times before you get to play killer a single time, and this can be really frustrating as much as I love playing both sides in Dragon Ball The Breakers, sometimes I found myself playing Survivor, sitting there thinking, man, I... I kind of, <laughs> I kind of hope the killer finds me just so I can find a different lobby and hopefully get to play the role that I actually want to play. Now this doesn't mean I was giving up, this doesn't mean that I was looking to die or I was throwing the game, I was still giving it my best effort, but I could just imagine somebody who hates playing Survivor very easily just giving up and letting the killer find them. In fact, I've already run into people who are disconnecting from the lobby immediately after the game starts. Now let's say you find yourself in a Survivor game. Your objective is to find these keys scattered around the map in order to actively a super time machine. That time machine is going to allow you to escape the trial winning the game. But that's not the only way you can win. You can also power up your survivor enough in order to take on the raider one on one or with a team of people. And if you manage to take the raider out, then you also win the game. But there's also side objectives on top of all of that. You can even collect all seven Dragon Balls to summon Shenron. Once he's summoned, you can wish in order to go ahead and power yourself up, or you can power up your entire team, which can make taking on the raider a lot easier. On the killer side of things, you're tasked with hunting down the survivors and taking them out before they start up that super time machine. If they do get that super time machine started up, then you can even destroy the super time machine, forcing them to find escape time machines to leave from. One huge drawback about Dragon Ball The Breakers is the microtransactions. They have a lot of things to unlock in here. A lot of voice lines, various cosmetics, and even abilities that you can upgrade and once again unlock. All of that costs in-game currency, and the game has a lot of different in-game currencies. And a lot of those in-game currencies are used for the gacha mechanic in the game. You can use your currency in order to go ahead and siphon a soul, giving you various transformations. But all of that is random. You don't get to choose any of those souls. And gacha mechanics in any game are never fun. But that random element is something that Bandai Namco loves to have in their games. The issue here is that you gain in-game currency at such a slow rate to where it almost feels like they're encouraging you to spend real money in order to go ahead and have an easier time unlocking some of these souls. The good thing here is that, to be honest, you don't really need any of those souls. You can very much win and defeat the raider pretty easily without any of those souls. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. The game has a lot of great things going for it. Hiding from the raider when they're right around the corner is really fun. You know, trying to go ahead and have that stealth aspect, not making too much noise. When you know the raider is looming right overhead, it, it, it's tense. It can feel like a little bit of a rush. There's a lot of fun to be had there. And once the raider finds you, trying to go ahead and waste their time as much as humanly possible before you go down is also a bit of a rush. Dodging behind a rock just before a key blast hits you, you know, running through a building, going upstairs, jumping down, getting on a bike, pressing the boost, and just getting out of dodge, giving you just enough time to activate Kaioken and spring across the map before the raider can do anything is a lot of fun when you're the one doing it. But as the raider, when you <laughs> when you have a survivor who's doing all that stuff, it can be pretty annoying. It can be pretty frustrating, especially when they get to traverse from one side of the map to the other side of the map in less than two seconds, and it takes you an arduous 10, 15, 20 seconds just to go from one side to the other side 
knowing that there's no hope in catching that person. It can be pretty annoying. But on the flip side, seeing a survivor panic and, and rushing them down knowing that there's nothing they can do about it is an absolute blast. I had this one game as Boo, where I took out most of the survivors in the game. Now when you level up from Super Boo and it's time to get into Kid Boo, the game takes everyone in the lobby, no matter where they are on the map, absorbs them and transports them into your body, allowing you to fight inside of Super Boo. And this mechanic came in clutch because somebody was going to the escape time machine and there was no way I was going to be able to stop them. I couldn't travel fast enough to get there in time. So what did I do? I went to a closer survivor who was on the ground, I absorbed him, and as a result I yanked that guy out of the escape time machine and into my body allowing me to go ahead and get the win. This was the dopest thing I've ever done in the game. I, <laughs> I was so hyped when that happened. I have never had more fun in Dragon Ball The Breakers, except for when I was playing Survivor and I had one of the coolest games there. I was playing against a boot player and they were going crazy, killing a lot of people, but the super time machine was just about to get started up and at the same time the raider was really close to destroying the super time machine. It was me and a couple of other teammates. We didn't have much power left, but we just had to waste enough time to start up the super time machine and to avoid it from getting destroyed. We were all working frantically together. They were popping their powers, fighting, you know, the raider as much as they possibly could, going down and trying to, you know, stay alive as long as possible and it came down to the wire where I had to go ahead and rush the killer as a normal survivor without any power up. I had to activate Kaioken and punch them in the face, <laughs> launching them away from the super time machine, giving us just enough time to win the game. While these moments are far and few between, they really brighten Dragon Ball the Breakers and they really allow the game to shine through as a unique experience separate from every other asymmetrical multiplayer game. This game is a lot of fun. It's one of the most fun Dragon Ball games I've ever played. And sure, while it has its downsides, I'll be honest, those downsides, I feel like they come more so from the genre itself as opposed to Dragon Ball the Breakers. Now don't get me wrong, Dragon Ball the Breakers has its own fundamental design issues. For example, if you have a bad early game as the Raider, you're more than likely going to lose in a lobby of experienced players. On the flip side, if you have a bad early game as Survivor, then once again, you're more than likely going to lose in a lobby with an experienced killer. Another notable mention is the gotcha mechanic. That That's pretty crappy. Luckily, it's just not something that's necessary about the game. But other than that, a lot of Dragon Ball the Breakers issues come from just asymmetrical multiplayer games in general. Things like the priority system, or like the killer role being ridiculously overpowered in a lobby full of new players, or the survivor role being overpowered in a lobby full of experienced players. Those are things that every asymmetrical game suffers from. And I really feel like that's why if you're a fan of asymmetrical games, you're going to be a fan of Dragon Ball the Breakers. But if you're not a fan of asymmetrical games, this isn't going to be for you. This isn't going to reinvent the wheel in a way that's going to make you suddenly enjoy the genre. So while I'm skeptical for the future of Dragon Ball the Breakers, I'm still enjoying the game for what it's worth currently, and I love this game. But I recognize it's not for everybody. So overall, that's the review of the game. It's fun, but it's not for everyone. Let me know what you think about Dragon Ball the Breakers in the comments down below. And if you want to check out some more of our videos, look no further than the videos on your screen now. And while you're at it, subscribe for daily content, and I'll catch you lovely people back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching.